It may look easy, but it's actually a little bit tricky to fish here. It's a small, strong, but very narrow and straight current. There are also trees and overhanging branches to take into account. A little bit too long and you get snagged. Too short and there will be no drift in the fly. It just dies. So, you have to be very accurate when fishing this spot. But, if you get it right, the fish might bite. And that's when the real problem starts. I say, the first minutes or so will be crucial for the outcome. There's a big tree laying across the river to the right, and if the fish head downstream, it will most certainly be lost. So I have to get the salmon closer and away from the danger zone. It's a tough fight. The salmon doesn't do anything sensational, just shaking the head, trying to break loose. I'm fighting the fish hard, winding the reel, slowly backwards when the fish pulls to keep the pressure up instead of just breaking with my hand on the reel. I think that's the best way to stay in command, because every time the salmon gives in a little I can gain more line. But it doesn't always work out the way I want. Sometimes I have to let go, and that hurts when the reel crank handle hammers my finger when the reel spins fast backwards. Fighting a big salmon is like a heavyweight wrestling game between two equal opponents. Not necessarily spectacular, but always hard and rough. So, you have to dimension your gears according to this. In a slow current, with none of few obstacles, you may use lighter gears. But when it looks like this, a short pole surrounded by difficulties, you have to step up in dimension. You need a rod that's strong enough to control the fish, and you need to use a line that will cope with the stress. I learned that lesson the hard way, and I always use a 0.4mm monofilament tippet when I break the strain over 20 kg when I fish in the river. Better safe than sorry, and my experience so far is very good. I haven't lost a single salmon or sea trout due to line break and I'm still catching a lot of fish. So, neither salmon or sea trout really seem to bother, not even in these extremely low water conditions. Gradually I get more and more control over the situation, the salmon is moving upstream. The fin tail works like a propeller in the shallow water, beating back and forth. I'm trying to land the fish, but the water is too shallow, or should I say, the salmon too big. We still have power left to put up a fight, and as soon as I'm losing pressure it heads back out to deeper water. When the fish is as big as this, it would have been nice to have someone to help me with the land. Then I could have back further up, letting the other guy grab the fish. But that's not the case, I'm on my own. However, it really should be no problem landing the salmon as long as I don't do anything stupid. You might think that I'm too old and too experienced to get excited by just another rotten salmon, even if it's big. Well, let's put it like this, when I don't get excited anymore when fishing for salmon or sea trout, then I put my rods aside and do something else. Luckily, I can't see that happen. Well, I'm struggling a little bit here. It would probably be easier to land a fish on my right side, downstream from where I'm standing. But then the tree would have been an issue, and I don't want to take that risk. So I'm playing safe. I'd rather give it a little extra time to ensure I can land a big salmon. I can feel that the salmon is getting tired. When I put more pressure on, it moves the way I want. Slowly, it comes in my direction. This time, I'm trying to land the salmon a little closer to me, where the water is slightly deeper. We're talking a few centimeters, but it seems to be sufficient. And finally, the fish gives in. 
It's a big made salmon, some 110 cm in length, so definitely over 10 kilos. My biggest catch in the river this year. Yeah, that sure is an oasis of salmon. It will have no problem finding a partner to mate with. And back out into the river again.